we've made great strides in the genetic selection in, in dairy cattle and the dairy cattle industry to lead to um, very steady growth in milk production per cow. Well, the higher levels of milk production create higher levels of metabolic heat. So in essence, these cows are working harder and harder each genetic generation um, to produce more and more milk. And as a result of that, they're generating more and more heat. So places in the country where heat stress hasn't been an issue before, like the upper Midwest, for example, and even into areas of Canada, now producers are, are becoming more and more aware of heat stress, not because their environment has gotten hotter, but because the, their cows are generating so much more heat that they're not able to lose the heat to get back down or to maintain sort of a, a steady state or a baseline or a comfort zone. And as a result, then, they have to reduce their work or reduce their metabolic heat production. And to do that, they back off on feed intake and they back off on milk production. And so genetic progress leading to, to more efficiency in milk production has led to, to a greater challenge as far as maintaining cow comfort due to, to the, the greater heat production. One of the, the big goals we've had um, through the research we've done at, at the University of Missouri, um, as well as other scientists that have worked in the area of heat stress, is first trying to, to gain a better understanding of the, the, the how this cow works, the biology of how she accumulates heat, how she loses heat, what happens during the day. And so what's the pattern of heat production and heat gain, if you will, during the day? And then from a, a management standpoint, um, what do we do to help her alleviate that heat gain in a way that's, one, both effective in helping her lose the heat, but also fits her natural patterns of behavior and, and what's in her best interest? Okay, so where do we place the fans? How long do the fans run? When do the fans run? How do we decide when fans run and, and when fans turn off or if fans should turn off at all during the day? And so for, for us at MU, um, Dr. Don Spires, who's an environmental physiologist, has really led our charge in helping us understand the, the physiology of, of heat gain and heat loss as it relates to dairy cows. And then we take that improved understanding and say, okay, how do we manage that? Let's, uh, let's apply not an engineering principle, but a biological engineering principle to that. And then as it relates to, well, what's the implications to digestion? And how do we manage nutrition? And so today we're talking about some, some basic um, principles that we think producers need to understand because that's really what they're managing, right? The biology of this cow. And so let's, let's make this biology Let's break it down into some, some, the simple key components, and then let's talk about, so how do I help manage and support that cow relate, around these key biological principles so that I can not only improve her comfort, but as a result of that, um, avoid some problems that can result from heat stress, like a drop in milk production, like a drop in fertility and reproduction, like an increased risk of mastitis, um, a decrease in butter fat, both percent and yield. How can, what can we do to, to help support that cow so that we avoid these losses that are due to the increased heat production that she needs to lose? For example, when we talk about cooling dry cows, you know, what, what are some options? For example, in our herds that have their, their dry cows close to their milking center, which is pretty typical so we can keep a close eye on the cows as they get close to calving, well, in our, our moderate size farms, I'm not running the milking parlor 24 hours a day, but that holding pen should have sprinklers and fans. And so between milkings, I can bring dry cows in use the fans and the sprinklers in that holding pen for about an hour for each group, cool those cows off once, maybe twice a day, and the research would show that I can, put, 
I can gain potentially six to eight pounds of milk per cow per day after she calves just because I've cooled her during the last month or so of her gestation before she calves and then starts a new lactation. So that's, that adds a little work, certainly, of bringing the dry cows in and cooling them and cleaning the holding pen. Adds a little wear and tear on the equipment, certainly. But six pounds of milk production per cow per day plus improved fertility because of, of that lower heat stress in that close-up dry cow easily pays, easily generates a, the income to cover that cost and provide a very nice return on the effort. There's work being done on evaluating um, genetics to try and, and help us understand the correlation between, for example, um, the, the genetics of a cow or genetics of sires and, and, and bulls primarily and the relationship to sensitivity of heat stress. Okay? Can I make that cow or will this sire produce cows or daughters that are less sensitive to heat stress? And they can, but those are cows that produce less milk. Okay? So the higher the production, as we continue to place a, a premium on higher milk production, which is essentially what we do in the dairy industry, right? Um, we'll continue to face a challenge of how do we help these cows manage the, the, the heat load, the meta metabolic heat load that's associated with that increased level of milk production. The first place we look is um, in our holding pen and making sure that we've got fans um, and sprinklers in that holding pen because those cows are crowded up there. And so heat stress becomes a, a, a greater challenge because the cows are, are moving heat from one cow to the other cow. And they're not losing heat because of the crowded conditions. Um, so first off, first and foremost, let's make sure we've got fans and perhaps sprinklers, depending on their system, in the holding pen to address that potential um, heat load um, or, or heat stress uh, or the potential for heat stress. The, the other thing, I think, big takeaway is let the cows be our, our thermometer instead of using a thermometer that turns the fans on and turns the fans off. Because sometimes they'll t that thermometer, which is measuring air temperature, will turn the fan off because the air is cool while the cows are still hot. Okay? And so I think our, our producers need to to, to use, continue to use really good animal husbandry and, and watch cows. And um, are they panting? Are they breathing heavy? Um, and, and are they panting at 9 or 10 o'clock at night? Are they panting at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning? Because that's telling us how effective our cooling system is or isn't working. And, um, and respiration rate is something that I can look at, watch, and observe without having to spend the any money, okay? Um, watch to see if they're chewing. You know, cows, cows should ruminate 12, 14 hours a day when their rumens are functioning and healthy. And heat stress will reduce rumination activity. And so are they breathing heavy? Are they ruminating? And if they're breathing heavy and not ruminating, then that's going to be a, a big sign that our cooling system isn't actually cooling these cows which is the, the sole purpose we've got one in, in the facility and, and it's operating. We know that cows that experience a, a serious heat stress event, not only do we'll, will we see a drop in, in milk production, but that impacts their fertility um, and that impact, depending on the severity of the heat stress, can last 30, 60 days after the heat stress event. So if a cow's heat stress in, say, August, it might impact and, and can impact, if it's um, serious enough, impact her fertility up into October. And we've, we've, really, we've understood that relationship for some time based on the research that, that's been done by um, faculty in, in Florida and Georgia and, and some of the more um, southern states in the country um, who've helped us really establish and understand that heat stress today can impact fertility 30 and 60 days later. Of course, we also understand that a cow that has ketosis today 
will affect her fertility 30 and 60 days later as well. So it's, it's the overall wellness of that cow and, and a wellness plan that helps us avoid heat stress, metabolic stress, um, to make sure that we allow her the potential or the opportunity to reach her genetic potential while also maintaining her fertility so that we can get her bred back and maintain the, the highest efficiency for her productive lifetime.